All right, guys, we made it. Welcome to unit five. It is our last big unit of the course. Uh, we It is such a big unit, uh, applications of uh, antiderivatives and derivatives both, but mostly of integration. Uh, it's such a big unit that we do kind of split it up into two major tests, but it is the last big idea that we study before we start reviewing for the AP exam. So to start us off, we're going to start pretty simple, um, as we typically do, and we're going to solve differentiable equations. And we're going to do that both algebraically and graphically, visually. Um, so a differential equation just basically relates a function and its derivative. And for us to start off with, we're going to know the derivative, and we're going to know some original information, and we're going to try to integrate so that we can work our way backwards to the original equation. So once again, we're going to start with the derivative, and we're going to try to work our way back. Okay, so in this first example, here we go, we have the derivative, and we want to find the original function, and we know a point on the original function. So we're going to start off knowing something that we, knowing how to do something that we already have been doing in class. So if we want to go from the derivative back to the original, we need to take the antiderivative of that value, which means I need to take the antiderivative of that function. Okay, you guys definitely know how to do this. I'd go up by a power and divide, up by a power and divide, and up by a power. But because this is indefinite, we are going to add that C value. And so this is where this information comes into play, because this information says, remember, this is now F. We've done the antiderivative. So this says if I plug in 0 to this original function for X, I should get out 2. Well, you can see if I plug in a 0, I get 0. 0, 0, plus c, but that's supposed to come out to 2, so that means we know that our constant would have to be 2. So our final answer should be to state the function. I'm going to go ahead and reduce this to 2x cubed, and then add in my c value. So pretty easy stuff. A lot of you had asked me in class about how, when are we going to find the C, how do you find C, and so here you go. You have to know a point on the original to be able to do that. So let's take a look at another example. So here we've got, again, the derivative uh, is sine of, uh, sine of 2x, and we want to find f. So we have the derivative. We want to go back. So we're going to take the integral of that. And my integral of sine of 2x, again, we'd have to use that u substitution. So just don't forget these little things that come into play. So my dx is replaceable with half du. I'm going to bring my half out. My integral of sine, if you remember, is negative cosine plus c, because it's indefinite. So again, we know that if we plug in pi over 2, but oops, don't forget, for this one, because we're indefinite, we do need to plug back in that u value. So I am going to plug back in 2x. So I've got 2x plus c. So now I'm ready. Whoops, that was close. Now I'm ready to plug in my x value, which is pi over 2. And I should get out, after adding c, 1. So this I'm going to do, this is really cos of pi. Cos of pi is negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 1 half is positive 1 half. And we can see when we subtract the 1 half that c is 1 half. So our final answer, again, should be to state the function you got, which is here negative one-half cos 2x, but now we know c to be one-half. All right, in our third example, we have a graph, and we also have some information about that graph. So we know that there are, it's from negative 3 to 3, we know that there are horizontal tangents at x equals negative 1, which is what we thought, at 1 and at 2. The areas of the regions A, B, and C, A, B, C, and D are 5, 4, 5, and 3, respectively. So A is 5, I'm going to fill that in. B is 4, I'm going to write a negative 4 because I don't want to forget that that should be a negative area. C is 5, and D is 3. Okay. So now the, we also know that for the original function g, remember, it says here, let g be the antiderivative of f. So g is what you get when you take the antiderivative of f, which means that this is the original, this is the derivative. 
So we have the graph right now of the derivative. Okay, so we know g of 2 is 7, so how do we find these? Okay, so um, if I want to find a value of g, which I do not have, um, my rule of thumb is this. If I want to find g of b, and I know what g of a is, so I know a value for a particular function, I'll call this l, then I can take the value so far at a, so I can take what the value would have been at a, and I can add the rest of the value to get me where I need to go. So I would add the inter interval um, going from a to b of the original function, so whatever that original guy is. So I need to ha find out how much I have to begin with, and then I need to find out how much I have to move from there to where I'm actually trying to go. So let's see what that looks like. So if I want g of 3, well, I know g of 2. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to say I know g of 2, and then to that I'm going to add what it takes, or the area, from 2 to 3 of my original function. Because again, then this will give me all of the value of the movement to get to 3. So, okay, I have f of x dx. So let's see what we got. g of 2 we already know is 7. That's why we chose to start there. And then the integral of f, which should give me g, this is going to give me everything it takes to go from 2 to 3, which is the thing that I want. Well, let's look. 2 to 3, we already know is 3. So to that, we're going to add 3, and we get a total area of 10. Okay, so in this second one, I want 0. But again, I have to start with what I know. So I know what I am at 2, and then I'm going to go from 2 to 0 of f of x dx. And notice, I do have to go from the one I know to the one I want. Now, you guys know... Obviously, g of 2 is 7, but these are backwards. This is not smallest to biggest, so I have to make it negative 0 to 2 if I'm going to get the true value. So 7 minus, now from 0 to 2, is 5, so I end up with 2. And finally, g of negative 3, same deal. I'm going to start with the one I know, and I'm going to go from the one I know to negative 3, the one I want. That, once again, is backwards. g of 2 is still 7, but I have to flip this so that it will be from negative 3 to 2. And now I can do 7 minus, let's see what we get, negative 3 to 2. All of that is 5 plus negative 4 plus 5. So minus 5 plus negative 4 plus 5, which gives me 10 minus 4, which is 6. So I really have 7 minus 6, or 1. Okay, the last one says, let h be the function defined by this. Oh boy, we have a function within a function, right? So you know there's going to be something interesting here. So we want to find the value of the integral of this. So I'm going to rewrite that. If I want the integral of this, then that means I want the integral from negative 2 to 1 of 3 f of 2x plus 1 and then plus 4. Okay, so dx. Um, obviously, I'm going to work with these two things separately. So I have negative 2 to 1 of 3 f of 2x plus 1 plus the integral from negative 2 to 1 of 4 dx dx. Here I can bring the 3 out, and then I'll have to work with this part in a second. This guy is just, you should know, a rectangle with a height of 4 and a width of 3. So that one's 12. So that part we already know. Now we got to work with this. Unfortunately, if I'm going to solve this, as you might have guessed, I can't solve a function within a function unless I use u substitution. So here I go. I'm just going to do this little piece. So I've got 3, and I've got my integral, and I'm going to have, let's see, if I take the derivative of this, I get 2dx equals du, or half du equals dx. So I've got 1 half, so I have to bring that 1 half out front. Then I have f of u. You. Now remember, you've changed your uh, function inside, so we have to change our bounds if we're going to use u. So that means I need to plug in negative 2 for my x value. So if I plug in a negative 2, I get negative 4 plus 1, or negative 3. And if I plug in 1, I get 3. So you guys know this just means the area of my graph from negative 3 to 3. So I need everybody. 
and then I'm going to multiply that by 3 halves. So I've got 3 halves, so I've got 5, plus the negative 4, plus the 5, plus the, th uh, what is that last one, a 3? Yeah. So then I've got 10, 13 minus 4 is 9 times 3 halves. So I have 27 halves, but don't forget, we got this little guy out here, plus 4. Now I could put those two things together, um, but this is fine too. Okay. And in our last example, this would just be a calculator example. Um, so again, if this is the derivative and I want to find a value on f, that means I'm going to have to work myself backwards. So if I want to find f of 0, I need start with what I know, initial value, plus the integral from the value I know to the value I want of my derivative, which I have here, so of root x squared plus 1 dx. Now, for this one, because I did say that this was a calculator problem, um, you don't need to do this by hand. Uh, you could, it's going to be pretty tedious, so by hand, um, or, um, excuse me, in the calculator, I can just plug in what f of 2 is, which is 1, and then I literally can type in that integral function to look like this. And I've got a little screen grab here. So when I plug that in, and you guys should be familiar with plugging in integrals at this point. So let's see. I'm trying to make it bigger for you, but it doesn't want to stretch. There we go. So as you can see, there's me plugging it in. I've got the integral. It's OK that it's backwards. Your calculator will, uh, um, will adjust for that. If you want to change it to 1 minus and make it from 0 to 2 because you just prefer that, you'll get the same answer. So it doesn't matter how you choose to do it. But for this guy, again, we like to be correct to three decimal places. So I would finish by saying f of 0 is negative 1.95. If you say 7, 9 and you take it out to the fourth decimal, the third will always be correct. So that's up to you. OK, I believe that's it. You're all set to start trying some of these. Again, the big takeaway from today is start with that initial value plus the integral of the extra that you need to get where you go. I think that's the main idea, right? So again, if I want f of 4, for example, and I know f of negative 1, f of negative 1 is what I'll start with, my initial value, and then I'll go from negative 1 to 4 um, of my derivative, and I can get this. Again, this being typically the area, although sometimes you do it algebraically, and this being that initial point. So if I knew that f of negative 1 was 17, I could plug in 17, and then I could find this area either graphically or if you knew the equation, you could do that as well. All right, guys, good luck. I'll see you in class.